immunosuppressives. These are not routinely used in all cases. They are used mainly in corticosteroid resistant cases or corticosteroid intolerant cases. When used, they also decrease the need for the amount of corticosteroids. In vision threatening inflammations, they are used as first line therapy. The specific conditions in which immunosuppressives are used as first line therapy are Bassett syndrome, sympathetic ophthalmitis, VKH syndrome and necrotizing scleroubitis. The adverse reactions seen with these can be severe and life-threatening. So management has to be along with the physician. What are the immunosuppressives that are commonly used? Methotrexate and azathioprine are the anti-metabolites that are used in uveitis. Among alkylating agents, cyclophosphamide and chloramducil are used. T-cell inhibitors are very commonly used these days and they include cyclosporin and tacrolimus. Among all these drugs, the more commonly used drugs are methotrexate and cyclosporin. What is the role of surgery in uveitis? The diagnostic role has already been mentioned, ACTAP, vitreous biopsy or chorioretinal biopsy. Therapeutic role of surgery is in dealing with cataracts, glaucoma, retinal detachment and vitrectomy. This is a photo of a complicated cataract. Note the polychromatic luster and the breadcrumb appearance seen mainly in the posterior subcapsular area and detected by slit lamp. Cataract is one of the more common complications of uveitis which results in visual loss. This can be corrected. But cataract surgery in uveitis is not like a cataract surgery in say age related cataract. Although the procedure is similar in the sense that the lens is extracted and an intraocular lens is placed instead, how it differs with the other cataract surgeries is the post-operative event of severe inflammation which occurs in uveitis. This is a surgery performed in a previously inflamed eye and hence the reaction can be severe. So post-operative iridocyclitis can be severe. Hence. The rules of surgery are do not operate if there is an active inflammation. Let there be no active inflammation for at least 3 months prior to the cataract surgery. Liberal use of perioperative steroids that is prior to surgery per op and then uh, postoperatively. The intraocular lens which is used can have exudates deposited on it to prevent this a heparin surface modified ions can be used. Glaucoma, which is another common complication of uveitis, is mainly managed by anti-glaucoma topical medications. But in case the patient develops iris bombay due to pupil block, then it needs to be corrected by peripheral iridotomy or iridectomy. Many a patient ends up with surgical management of glaucoma and this includes trabeculectomy. Again, surgery in a previously inflamed eye can result in severe inflammation and this can result in fibrosis of the blood so the surgery can fail. So in order to avoid this, trabeculectomy is done with the use of antimetabolites like mitomycin C or 5-fluorouracil. Other complications of uveitis, cystoid macular edema. This is best prevented by adequate use of corticosteroids. Use enough, soon enough and probably even long enough. However, once the edema has occurred, it can be controlled by control of inflammation against corticosteroids, use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and in some cases, parts plena vitrectomy may be needed, especially if associated with persistent vitritis. Hypotony is managed by intensive corticosteroids and cycloplegia to help the ciliary body recover. If a cyclitic membrane is present, then parts plena membranectomy needs to be done. Vitreous opacification needs to be handled by surgery in a few select cases, in which case pars plena vitrectomy is the treatment of choice. These are a few examples of management of uveitis. A 35-year-old male presents with ciliary condition, fine keratic precipitates, non-granulomatous, anterior chamber flare and cells, posterior sinicae and hypopion, all seen in the right eye. There was a similar history of redness a year ago. So the diagnosis here would be anterior uveitis. This is the photo where you can see posterior sinicae, pupillus bound down 
and inferiorly a hypopion is present. How do we manage this case? History and examination first to narrow the differential revealed nothing significant. In which case, core lab tests are ordered. Among the core lab tests, MAN2 test was highly significant. So there was a high suspicion of tuberculosis. The patient was referred to the pulmonologist who confirmed the diagnosis of tuberculosis. Now the management was both for tuberculosis as well as for anterior uveitis. So a co-management was indicated. Next. Ocular management. This included topical corticosteroid and cycloplegic mitriatic agents. The topical steroids used was prednisolone eye drops. It was used in a high dosage and frequently, so as frequent as hourly, and then tapered as per the response. Since there was a presence of a hypopion and the pupil appeared bound down, stronger and longer acting cycloplegic mitriatic agent was required. So, homatropine or atropine needed to be used. Homatropine was used three times a day. Patient was followed up for the resolution of inflammation for which a slit lamp examination would reveal whether the keratic precipitates were coming down, the cells were coming down and hypopion was disappearing. Patient was also followed up for intraocular pressure which could be increased in the presence of the hypopion or because of trabeculitis or because of the use of steroids itself. So the patient was also followed up for the complications of uveitis. Systemically, patient was managed with anti-tuberculosis therapy. So this is how a patient with anterior uveitis was managed. This is a patient with intermediate uveitis. A 13-year-old girl presented with fever of unknown origin and this was going on for one month. She then developed redness of both eyes of one week duration. Ocular examination revealed fine KPs and few cells in the anterior chamber. So there was spillover anterior uveitis. Dilated fundus examination revealed not only anterior vitreous exudates but snowballs in the vitreous. This led to the diagnosis of intermediate uveitis. However, the systemic cause which is more commonly associated with intermediate uveitis was not found at this stage. The physician in the meantime noted lymphadenopathy. This is how the patient presented. Note the cells and exudates in the anterior vitreous. Lymph node biopsy in this patient revealed caseating granulomatous lesions and hence the diagnosis of tuberculosis was made. This again required the systemic management with ATT and the fever responded within 4 days. Ocular management included follow-up initially and when the vision began to drop which happened in one week's follow-up, systemic corticosteroids under the cover of ATT was started. Corticosteroids were used for a very short period of time and in fact were tapered and stopped within 4 weeks. The patient could also have had injections of steroids periocularly, that is subtenance injection. This is a patient who presented with posterior uveitis. 35 year old HIV positive female patient complained of sudden painless loss of vision in the right eye. Ocular examination revealed spillover anterior uveitis and CMV retinitis in the fundus. The CD4 count was as low as 50. This is the fundus picture. Note the granular retinal necrosis as well as the frosted branch angiitis. The diagnosis was with the pattern of the lesion and management was antiretroviral therapy, IV gancyclovir, an induction course and then the patient is advised maintenance dose. Thank you.